Welcome back. You're still watching Power Breakfast right here on Citizen TV. We now want to move to a different con con conversation. Now, the Kenya Institute of Special Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, is hosting the East African Conference on Inclusive Education uh, on Thursday and Friday this week at the USIU. Now, the conference aims at providing a scholarly platform to researchers, special education experts, teachers, students, parents, NGOs, policymakers, and other stakeholders to deliberate on the theme. Now, the theme is inclusive education, strategies for enhancing access, equity, quality, and opportunities for all. To help us discuss this, we are honored to have Timothy Wambua, the director at Kenya Institute of Special Education with us. Good morning, Nakaribu Sana to Citizen. Thank you very much, Fred. Now, when we talk about special education what exactly do we mean because now we're talking about inclusive education yeah. and special education what is the relationship well special education basically was uh, education meant for people with uh, special needs and disabilities mm -hmm. when we talk about inclusive education is when we think in terms of uh, not segregating the people with special needs okay. but putting them in the same schools and same environment with the normal students. Yeah. That's what we mean by inclusive education. So, so this conference, uh, the main focus in, uh, is on students with special needs and uh, the education. We're talking about disabled children, uh, children w probably who are slower to learn. Yes. Uh, is that the kind of... Uh, because now people immediately go to disability, uh, people with this, uh, physical disability. Yes. Who are these other special needs students, apart from those with physical infirmities? Well, we have uh, students who have uh, uh, pe stu people who have uh, uh, um, needs like uh, special needs like uh, visual impairment, mm -hmm. hearing impairment. Um, we have autism, which is relatively new. Mm -hmm. These are people with uh, special uh, abilities in their men their mental abilities. So it's a whole range of. Uh, mm -hmm. Initially, people just thought of the physical disabilities, mm -hmm. but there's a whole range now. Okay. We even have dyslexia, which is something to do with the mind also. Dyslexia. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's not just physical. Uh, I don't need to look at a student and actually say there's physical disability for them to qualify for special needs uh, as a student. Definitely. It's not just the okay. physical disability. Okay. So, quite a number of disabilities. So where does the Institute for Special Education come in? What exactly is your role in this? Well, KISE, or Kenyan Institute of Special Education, has about 11 mandates. Key among them is the training of teachers who uh, handle students with disabilities in okay. the, the schools. We, but we also do assessment and placement. Assessment where we'll get um, children with disabilities. We're able to assess them. We have a team of experts. So you assess, assess the students as well? We also assess, uh, assess students, yes. Mm -hmm. And we're able to advise parents on which schools are best for them mm -hmm. and what kind of treatment is uh, good for them so that there's early intervention. Mm -hmm. When there's early intervention, then you're also able to maybe counter the f effects which come much later on in life. Mm -hmm. So we also have an assessment center, okay. fully fledged. Mm -hmm. um, we also do outreach programs where we go out to the field and we're able to assess people out in the field and also assist in them in assessment okay. and also create awareness. Because uh, quite a number of people think that when they have a son with a disability, it's like a curse. Mm -hmm. But we create awareness and uh, advice that this okay. guy is just a normal person who can yeah. be given an opportunity yeah. uh, to go to school. And how big is that problem, uh, that ignorance, uh, the fact that many parents have children with some form of disability uh, or they lack access to even education uh, facilities? How much of a problem is that ignorance? I think it's quite high in some, of, some areas, mm -hmm. especially in the rural areas. Like a week ago, two weeks ago, we were in Tharaka Nithi, and you can still see uh, back out there in the villages, the awareness is not as much as in the towns, mm -hmm. the urban areas. So it's still big in the rural areas. Uh, parents are more exposed in the urban areas. They're so what happens to the children in rural areas with special needs? Uh, in urban areas, probably they are more aware they'll be taken to school. What happens to those in uh, rural areas? Quite a number of them just, um, I would say, rot in the villages mm -hmm. because they're not given the opportunity. And this is basically because the parents are not aware or the parents uh, uh, really don't want to expose the, the, the disab disabled students, yes. the disabled children. And when you say they're not aware, is it that they're not aware of the opportunities available or they're not aware that their children have the ability to learn? What is this lack of awareness? Uh, I would say both. Uh -huh. There are some of them who believe that these kids, when they have disabilities, they cannot 
excel That's in the academics, mm -hmm. which is not true. Because we have seen people who are able to excel given the right opportunity when they have disabilities. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are those parents who believe, uh, why should I expose my kid mm -hmm. who has a disability? People laugh at me. Okay. Which again is what uh, really needs to, they need to be told. Mm -hmm. Expose these kids. Give them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. They're just as good as any other. Okay. And when you talk about opportunities for people with special needs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunities for education, um, the number of special needs schools mm -hmm. that we know of are very limited, are very yes. few. Uh, is this one of the challenge? Uh, have we made any progress in as far as uh, uh, building more schools for children with special needs? Or are we trying to integrate them into these other schools? And if so, what are some of the interventions that should be put uh, into those schools to actually accommodate them? Well, the, if you look at our theme, it's about uh, inclusive education, enhancing strateg strategies of enhancing inclusive mm -hmm. education. The way to go world over now is not to segregate these people with uh, handicaps. Okay. It's to bring, make them believe that they are normal like any other. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's inclusive education, bringing them into the normal schools. Okay. And they're able to integrate and uh, feel part and parcel of society. Um, you realize that uh, the government is uh, really focusing a lot on inclusive education. In fact, they have even come up with a policy. Mm -hmm. uh, a company like Kenya Re has even uh, gone right ahead and uh, done a big dormitory at Lenana High School mm -hmm. and one in Sinja Girls. That's the corporate world coming in even to intervene mm -hmm. and uh, give opportunity to these students with uh, uh, special needs so that they're able to integrate. Some of the interventions which are necessary is like doing ramps, mm -hmm. ramps in the schools where we have stairs, so like uh, people who own a wheelchair are able to move freely, mm -hmm. um, do brails. The other very good intervention is even having teachers have capacity, mm -hmm. capacity built to be able to handle the normal students and be able to have uh, some idea of how to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, those students with special needs. Are we saying that we'll no longer have a need for special schools for special students going forward? Because a few years back, that was a trend, that uh, there were specific schools for children or for students with special lean, uh, needs. We still need some of them, because there are those uh, uh, kids with uh, extreme disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we still need some of those schools. But the way to go mm -hmm. is to integrate the rest mm -hmm. with the normal students. Okay. They feel much better. Uh -huh. um, a couple of weeks ago, we had an, uh, a conference at KACD where some of the students from a special school, um, there was one particular girl who was very passionate and saying, uh, I don't need to be put in a school for the blind. Yes. I need to be in a school. And uh, she was very happy about being the current school. Mm -hmm. She said she likes being there and her colleagues have really assisted her feel mm -hmm. like a normal human being. Yes. So that's the way to go not to segregate them. Okay. But there are those extreme cases where they think we'll still need to have some special school with some special facilities because mm -hmm. of the nature of the disability. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there, there, there are challenges even when you seek to integrate uh, students with special needs into schools yeah. um, uh, that uh, just the normal schools uh, yeah. together with other students. Mm -hmm. uh, does it mean therefore that now you post uh, some teachers to these same schools to actually handle those uh, particular students? Isn't that also a form of segregation? Do they get to sit in the same classes, uh, go through the same curriculum, uh, because now you're talking about issues of Braille, vis-a-vis yeah. -vis, uh, normal text? Yeah. Uh, how does it work? Uh, if you've been watching, you've been following the trends, uh, KICD is even um, working on a ref to reform the teacher training curriculum, mm -hmm. where every teacher trainee by the time they come out of the teacher training colleges, we'll have some basic idea of our special needs uh, education. Okay. Where every teacher will have an ability to handle students with special needs. So that's the way to go. Okay. So the government is even in the forefront in making sure they assist in the integration. So it is the same same teachers who train these other normal students, uh, and by normal I mean uh, just people without special needs, without yeah. any particular special need, and the same same teachers serving uh, even those with special needs. Going forward, that's a trend we want to adopt? Well, they will have some, every teacher will have some element of special needs ability, mm -hmm. but we'll still have those with specialized, uh, a deeper course, like mm -hmm. in case we'll still have the specialized course where a teacher has a full spectrum of the ability to handle those kids. Yes. 
but just because of the integration bit, every other teacher will have some element of um, knowing how to handle special needs yes. as students. Because in some cases, you'll just find in a school, you might only have two or three. Mm -hmm. In other cases, you might have very many. Maybe where they have very many, then you'll need those teachers with that uh, deeper mm -hmm. ability of handling mm -hmm. such kids. Now, having this conversation at a time when we're talking about a new curriculum uh, yes. coming into place, we're talking about shortage of teachers across the country, yeah. uh, there is a challenge. Uh, how does KISA come in? Because I, I'm assuming you're the only college that trains teachers uh, of, of, for students with special needs. Uh, at least that's a government-sponsored one. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of shortages should, if a tall TSC is having a problem, yeah. just serving schools, then for you it's seven compounded. It does, it, does it therefore mean that uh, you have a bigger problem trying to cover uh, all the students with special needs across the country? Well, the, the shortage is there countrywide. Mm -hmm. But as I've said, just said, I think the government uh, have been working closely with the government. They are seeing the need and they are going. They are expanding their, the uh, vacancies of people who can be trained. Right now in Kise, we even um, gone ahead and proposed uh, having a pre-service where we admit form for leavers directly for a special needs mm -hmm. uh, diploma. The current uh, trend is where we have um, in-service. People already in the field, they come okay. to KISE for a diploma, uh, which is in-service. But we have gone ahead and uh, proposed to the government, and uh, I think they're thinking favorably mm -hmm. about it. Okay. And how yes. attractive is this uh, opportunity for any teachers to actually uh, come and learn about uh, teaching uh, students with special needs? Are you, are you having a problem recruiting people? Are people willing to come and offer themselves that this, I want to be trained, this is the kind of line I want to follow? I don't think we have any problem. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the demand is high. The quite a number of people really want to get that training. Uh, apparently, quite a number of universities have also started a special needs education uh, oh. degrees. Okay. Though I still believe the one from Kisa is the best. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you have to say that. Uh, yeah. uh, when it comes to curriculum, because that's the other issue, uh, are we now, when we're talking about new school curriculum, yes. are we, has special needs education been taken into account by KICD fully to ensure that from the word go, ECD going all the way up, that that is handled as well? I believe so, mm -hmm. because um, they are working on the new books, and as they work on the new books uh, in the new curriculum, they've used uh, quite a number of our staff to adapt uh, whatever material they have for people mm -hmm. with special needs. Mm -hmm. Like even right now, there is a, there is a retreat in uh, Naivasha where quite a number of our lecturers are involved in um, adapting the books, uh, the standard one, two, three curriculum books, mm -hmm. um, to adapt them so that they are able to be used by people with a visual impairment. So some of those books are being converted into Braille? I'm some of them are being turned into Braille mm -hmm. and also the large print because some of the students are not really, really okay. blind. Uh -huh. They just um, have uh, some spe specific issues of eye, okay. eyes. So we also have the large print. Mm -hmm. So we have the large print and we have the Braille. Okay. Yeah. Just before we come to the conference, what's the biggest challenge faced by uh, your line of work, uh, special education and inclusivity of uh, students or, or with special needs uh, into education. What is the biggest challenges? Is it a lack of schools? Is it a lack of teachers? What is it? Um, right now, the biggest challenge, I think one is that um, we don't have enough teachers. Um, a week ago, we were in a seminar where KNEC had done a survey and they realized that uh, about 57% of the teachers handling uh, special schools are not trained mm -hmm. properly. And 57% is a very big uh, percentage. It's more than half. Yeah. It's more than half. So I think that's one of a very serious challenge where we are handling these uh, students and we don't have the right qualifications. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very big challenge, wow. which is being addressed by, as like I've said, KCD mm -hmm. in reforming the teacher training uh, curriculum. Okay. And um, we have also, like I've said, proposed to the ministry that we can intervene mm -hmm. and have more numbers and have the pre-service course. Okay. Yeah. Now to the conference, the East Africa Conference on Inclusive Education to be held tomorrow and Friday at the USIU. The theme is Inclusive Education, Strategies for Enhancing Access, Equity, Quality and Opportunities for All. Who will be in attendance? 
Uh, we have delegates from uh, East African countries. Mm -hmm. We have already had confirmation from Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. Okay. Um, they will be here. We'll have uh, academic papers from all those uh, countries. Yeah. In fact, we have a linkage with East African countries on this. Mm -hmm. Our keynote speakers, uh, one is from the USA, one is from Australia, one is uh, from our own Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, so... The participation is international. Okay. Uh, is, will it be open to the public, for example, because I can see uh, you're talking about researchers, special education experts, teachers, students, parents, NGOs, policy makers, and other stakeholders. Will it be an open forum where the public can just come in and probably even contribute to the conference? It's open. Uh -huh. It's open. In fact, we're encouraging people to come mm -hmm. so that they're able to understand issues, maybe even participate in the roundtable discussions by asking questions to be enlightened on what is going on. So it's open. Okay. It's not uh, closed to scholars only. It's open okay. to the public. And what are the expectations? What do we hope to get at the end of this conference on Friday? One will be, like I've said, we have all these international speakers. So first of all, we'll be getting to know what is happening in other countries. We'll be able to borrow the best practices mm -hmm. from different countries. Like I've said, um, we have a speaker from the US, a speaker from Australia. We listen to them, mm -hmm. listen to how they are able to do the inclusive education. Of course, we cannot borrow each and everything, mm -hmm. but there must be one or two things which we think, if we try that in our country, it may it work, work, it may improve what mm -hmm. we have. So, and we're also looking at uh, um, as, as an idea where we'll be able to foster a lot of partnership within the East African countries, mm -hmm. where we exchange ideas and... Um, Basically, at the end of the day, we'll also be able to get the dis right discussions which can um, assist in for policy for formulation mm -hmm. for the Ministry of Education okay. and the country at large. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Timothy Wambo, Director, Kenya Institute of Special Education. On the East Africa Conference on Inclusive Education, taking place on the 22nd and 23rd of this month, that's tomorrow and Friday, at the USIU. The theme of this conference is Inclusive Education, Strategies for Enhancing Access, Equity, Quality, and opportunities for all. Thank you for that interview. Thank you very much, Fred. Power Breakfast still continues. Remember, that's a hashtag to use up until 9. Karate coming up with Willis Waburu. Do stand by for that. Good morning.